Hi guys, today we're going to look at some other uh, pant crafting techniques. We're going to look at pockets and we're going to look at making a yoke and we're going to go ahead and look at some different pant silhouettes. So if you want those bell bottoms or boot cuts and things like that. So let's get connected. And let's open up the pants we have been working on. So here's the pants we've been working on, and let's take a quick look at how to first make a yoke. So a yoke um, is very common in pant construction, although you don't necessarily need it. But if you're going to go ahead and draft a standard like jean construction pattern, they almost always have it. So they're in the back, and they're basically used to eliminate the dart. Uh, in place of a seam and what we're going to do is we're going to grab this dart and I'm going to move it up just a little bit so it's coming right down to this full hip and it's going to give us a quite low yoke seam um, so I'm going to raise it up just a bit I can't raise it up too far because we do want the fullness um, to really be uh, in this sort of full hip area so I'm going to raise it up just a little bit which will allow us to do a little bit higher of a yoke seam. Now making the yoke is really easy and we did this in skirts and it's pretty much the same way. So if you're gonna do a more complex yoke seam, I would recommend drafting the line first, but I'm just gonna do a very standard yoke and just sort of cut it straight through here. Typically it's a little lower down on the center back and a little higher up on the uh, side seam, hip area. So I'm gonna start it maybe, oh, say or like, let's say around here. I'm gonna make sure that green line is, is going through the tip of our dart and I'm going to cut. Sure, I'll leave this right now at a, a half inch seam since we've already uh, put our seam allowances on there. Now, since we have that dart cut, I'm gonna move this upper piece out I'm going to delete the dart from this area. There's just a little bit of that tip left, but we're going to delete that out of there. Now, what I can do, um, hopefully it's going to work because I have a little bit of the, the tip of the dart sort of going down below here, but I think it'll work. I'm going to close the dart. And you remember we did this um, in the skirt as well. Now, if closing to the dart doesn't work, you can always cut the dart lines and join the two pieces together. But let's see if it will work. There we go. Now what I want to do is I want to, this creates quite pointy uh, lines. Uh, I'm going to first get rid of the dart. It allows me to, there we go, click on it. And I'm going to just change these points to curves to sort of smooth out. Ooh. I'm going to zoom in there. There's probably an extra point in there that's causing that to be a little bit weird. Yep, right there. So I'm going to delete that point and then there we go. We have our yoke seam. And that's all we need to do. It's pr pretty simple. I want to correct the grain. Of course it needs to go uh, and be aligned with our center back. So there we are. And if I rotate it out a little bit, you can see 
basically what happened to the dart. And what happened to the dart is it's now in this seam. So we're getting all the fit we need for around uh, the butt right here in this yoke seam. And that is, of course, their purpose, their intent is to transfer the fitting that we would get with that dart into a seam that sort of comes across the back here like this. So there we go. There is our uh, yoke. And let's take a look now at creating pockets. So our pockets, uh, we'll start with the easy ones first, and those are our patch pockets for the back. And um, ooh, we got a little stray line here. Let's get rid of that. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to protect, let's zoom out a little bit and move out up. I'm going to protect both these pieces. And kind of draft on top of them. Now I'm only drafting on top of them just to sort of see how they fit on the piece. It's a little difficult of course because this is coming up we don't really see it flat um, but that's okay. We can still get a good idea of how big you know obviously we don't want a pocket wider than our actual pants um, and sort of how it's going to fall. And what I can do is since most patch pockets on the back, um, we typically have like a pentagon shape. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a piece, a sort of base piece out of a rectangle. And let's make it, oh, let's make it four and a half and four and a half. We can alter this of course later if we want it bigger or smaller, but it's a good place to start. And here it is. I'm just going to bring it over here and place it on top. And let's zoom into that area. So here's our pattern piece. Um, it's looking, it's a pretty good size. But let's say I want to make it that um, pentagon shape that we are used to seeing with batch back patch pockets. Now the beauty of patch pockets is we can really make them any shape that we want. They're really just a separate piece of fabric that we patch on or sew on top of the garment after the seams are already made. Uh, so most of the garment has already been sewn. At least um, this yoke seam would certainly be sewn first and then we would apply the patch pocket. So to make that pentagon shape that we're used to seeing, I'm just going to add a point down here, right to the middle of the seam, uh, this bottom, not the seam, but the bottom line here. And again, I'm gonna use my proportionate value of 50% and 50% to do that. I'm gonna keep it as a grading point and say, okay. Now that we have this point, I can grab the move point tool, this guy right up here, or keyboard shortcut M, and move him straight down. Now, in order to move him straight down, I'm gonna hold the Alt key and my measurement box will pop up to do so. And I want to measure it from the last point, so that is its original point placement, down. So I don't want any change right or left, I wanna keep this point right in the middle of the pocket. So I'm gonna keep the X value at zero, and I'm gonna drop it, mm, I dro it looks like I dropped it about an inch and a quarter which looks pretty good to me, actually. If you wanna do it more or less, you can type it in and it'll show you. But I'm gonna keep it there at an inch and a quarter right now, okay? And there's our patch pocket. Uh, and again, we can change this really to any shape that we want. This is just a very standard um, shape that we would see for the back of the pocket. I'm gonna move it out for the finishing. I want to change the grain to go straight up and down and not across. Now, of course, you can really put the grain to be any direction. Um, normally, if you just had a solid piece of fabric or even a printed piece of fabric, uh, especially a directional print or have a directional fabric with a nap, you want to keep it up and down. Um, but if you had like a plaid or a stripe pattern, that you want to have a sort of contrasting design to the rest of the garment. You can do it on cross grain or even bias. You'll give yourself a nice little crisscross pattern uh, if you have a plaid, if you're doing plaid pants. 
Um, so feel free if you decide to do this out of a type of striped or um, uh, plaid pattern fabric uh, to change that grain along for sort of design purposes. I'm going to rename it po uh, Patch Pocket. You can also name it Back Pocket if, of course, the patch pockets are going to go on your back. And I'm going to go ahead and add seam allowance. We need seam allowance all the way around. Now we're going to have a slightly larger seam allowance on the top. And that has to do with how we fold it down and finish uh, the top of the pocket. We use that little extra piece of fabric, almost like a facing. So I'm going to start with the bottom part of the pocket and give it a half inch seam allowance. You can go all the way down to quarter inch if you like. Uh, depends on really how you're going to finish and attach these pockets. Um, but uh, half inch uh, is fine. I wouldn't do any more than a half inch. In fact, down to a quarter inch uh, would be appropriate. Now I'm gonna go back and finish off the top. And I'm gonna leave that at an inch. And that, of course, will give us enough to, to finish the top. So similar to how we leave a little bit more uh, fabric to hem our, uh, uh, a little bit more seam allowance to hem the bottoms of, say, pants or skirts, the same sort of principle goes here. We leave a little bit more here. Now I'm just looking at this yoke and um, I'm seeing something that I don't like about it. So I'm going to go back to the yoke. Sorry, I should have done this a little bit better. But um, see how this is kind of coming up to a point here? I'm gonna zoom way in so you can see it. Uh, we always want to avoid points like this, especially when coming sort of in a symmetric, uh, where this coming into the center front or center back seam. Or a lot of times we can also put the yoke on folds if we so desire. So to square this off a little bit better, I'm gonna add a point about like right here and then use my move point tool just to raise it up a bit. So this intersection with the center back is a nice solid right angle. Okay. So two easy things, easy yoke, easy back patch pocket. Now the last thing I'd really want to do is kind of indicate on the pants pattern where this patch pocket is going to be sewn. Now it's a little difficult because again we have this negative space, but I can indicate the top where the top is going to sit um, right here on the yoke seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect the patch pocket, go to my drafting tool, and then add a line. Let's highlight the yoke piece so it knows that I want to work on that piece instead of the patch pocket. And I'm just going to draft a line. Hopefully that is going to sit on our yoke seam. Let's see if it does. Yep, so that line is going to indicate where the top of the pocket is going to be placed. And of course, that's always important because we want to know where all of our elements are going to go in our garment. And patch pockets are a little bit different because they don't seam in, really. There's no seam here. They um, just simply get put on top of the pattern. So this line, again, is indicating uh, where on the garment the uh, pocket should go. Okay, now that we got our patch pockets and our yoke seam finished, I'm going to go and remove the protection for these guys. And let's move to the front and look at how we create the front pockets. Now these are a little bit more complicated than our patch, patch pockets and they need a, a few more pieces. Because uh, they are going to get a lining in addition. Let's zoom all and then I can zoom in. And I'll zoom with rectangle right here. Okay. 
Now, on a typical jean construction, our our patch, or I'm sorry, our front pockets kind of curve from waist to side seam, kind of like this. But there's many different shapes that we can use. On dress pants, a lot of times they just go straight down from the waist seam to the side seam. And sometimes they have sort of an angular shape. So they'll go down and then have kind of a hard corner and go off to the side seam. So you can really do any kind of shape that you want, so long, of course, that this pocket goes from the waist to the side seam. And you want to relatively make it big enough for your hand to put in, of course. Now, in this instance, we might have a little bit of trouble um, with the darts, the front darts, them running in here. Um, so in this instance, we have a couple of options. We can do just one dart, move both of uh, the darts into one dart and move it a little bit closer to the front or use this dart location so it's out of the way of the pocket that we're making. Um, or because this is the front, we do have the option to simply close these darts and leave it as is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Remember, we can only do this on the front because we don't have um, the curves and shapes like we do on the back that we need the darts or seams to fit around. Um, so again, we're fairly flat in this area, so we can afford to eliminate our darts. So now we have a nice clean surface and I can use pretty much all of this to create my pocket shape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to draft the pocket shape that I want. Now I'm gonna do a classic jean pocket opening and it's going to come about you know let's say not right in the middle but not too close to the edge here um, we're going to see it be uh, between three and four inches from the side seam so um, I'll, I'll use 0.6 but just before I do let me see just how far that is from our side seam by measuring the distance and I'm looking again between about three and four inches that looks a little short, so I'm going to go a little farther in. It's probably okay. If we do a little bit shorter here, we want to just make it a little deeper here. So even if I go here as far as here, so long as I make it deep down, we'll have the room enough for our hand to go through. I'm going to do it maybe just a little bit further in. So let's start maybe just here. That'll give us about a good three inches. Okay, yes, I am snapping it. Now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna draft a nice sort of curved line. To my side seam. Okay. I'm gonna finish drafting. And there we go. Again, if I want to adjust this, I can. So maybe I want to make this a little more kind of like this. Again, it's up to you really how it's shaped. Um, this might look a little longer than your typical jean pocket. Um, and that's really because these pants go up to the waist. Now, let me actually just take a minute to talk about kind of modern pant design and where it falls on the body. So traditionally, pants did indeed start at the waist. Um, however, this started to change really in sort of the mid 90s, early to mid 90s. We started to see jeans and pants on a whole um, drop a bit lower from the waist. Uh, so much in fact that when we think about what we call high-waisted pants today, they're really just waisted pants, um, uh, but they come up a little bit higher than what we're used to seeing um, because today most pants will come and end more at really like the high hip. Um, there's even some very um, extreme examples of what we'd call sort of low rider jeans that are cut very, very low, really just, just right above that full hip. Uh, and they sit very, very low on our hips um, and uh, very uh, well below our waistline. Now, if we want to draft these sorts of pants, it's rather easy. All we have to do is simply sort of cut off the top of our 
uh, pants to where we want the lowered waistline to be. And we can do this quite easily using the Create and Parallel tool. So just for as, as an example, I'm going to leave these pants wasted as is, but if you guys in the future have a, a desire to create pants that are not all the way up to the waist, and again, most pants are not all the way up to the waist. They, again, they sit a little bit more uh, on average today about the high hip which is about three inches lower than our typical waist. So I'm gonna use my Create Parallel tool to create a nice parallel line. Oh, wait, hold on, what did I click? Uh-oh. Let me make sure I'm using the right tool. I'm just gonna go across here and create a parallel line from that waistline about three inches down. And again, this is gonna be our high, about our high hip and it gives us this nice line so I can just go ahead and cut along this line get rid of this and now this line would be our new waistline and that would give us of course pants that are not all the way up to the waist they would have a little bit more of a modern uh, construction again coming up only to about the high hip and if you want to go you know really low and do those you know sexy low rider jeans you can go even more um, I would still keep it a little bit above our, our full hip because then, of course, we start to get into our crotch area, so you don't want to make them too low. <laughs> um, or maybe you do, I don't know. Uh, uh, but again, if you would like to create pants with a bit of a more modern construction, I would um, definitely recommend cutting them off at about that high hip level. Okay, tangent over, let's get back to our pocket. So, um, our pocket now is going to be cut and how we actually create these pockets is this piece is going to become its own separate piece and it sort of comes together when we attach the waistband and the side seam together and what we do is we attach lining pieces to this pocket uh, piece right here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this line exactly how I have it to create two pieces. I'm going to move this guy out. So this line is going to represent the pocket opening on pants. So that's the line that you see that um, uh, creates the sort of top of the pocket on the front of the pants. Now, I'm gonna do one more thing to this. I'm gonna slightly extend this curved line. And I wanna do this because when we layer this, I want a little bit of overlap from this pocket line and this guy. And what that will do is it will help to hide the pocket lining because we don't really wanna see the pocket lining kind of popping up. Um, and a little bit of extension here can again help to hide that pocket lining. Now what I wanna do is, um, after I do that, I'm gonna put notches so I know where to line it up from here to here. So, but first I'm gonna do uh, that extension. I'm gonna use our extend and parallel tool to do that. And it really just sort of pushes out a line parallel to itself. Now you can also use this um, tool in negative measurements if you wanna make uh, a shorter um, uh, version of your piece, which is really great for maybe tiered ruffles or something like that. I'm going to extend by an inch, which is really more than enough. You can do only about um, half an inch, inch if you uh, so desire. Depends on really kind of how you want to do it and how much fabric you want to save. But an inch is good. And we're going to say okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place notches an inch in from the edge. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. That would be my next point, pretty close. And we'll do that down here as well. Now I believe it should be about this point. I don't know why it's kicking out to the side like that. So let me put it down here. And this is, of course is my previous point. So let's move that to an inch. And then there we go. Now what that does is it allows me to know 
where to line it up. And so I'm going to just right here put its corresponding notches. Because of course, if we have one set of notches on, whoop, I got a random notch right here. I don't want that guy. Let's move him out a little bit so I know we can. Oh, oh, I see what's happening. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, we've, uh, we have one set of notches on one pair. I have it on the other. So I know that when I line this guy up, I want those notches to meet right here and here. So we're allowed this inch of overlap from when the pocket starts to when actually our pocket lining for the bottom is going to start. And again, this will hide, help hide the actual pocket lining from being visible on the face. Okay, so that takes care of our pattern pieces um, for uh, the actual pocket, but now for the self pieces of the pocket, but we have to do the lining as well. And we're going to do two different lining pieces. We're going to do a top lining that attaches here and a bottom lining that attaches here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to protect this piece. And what I want to do is now draft my pocket shape based on the uh, shape I have here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line exactly. So go down here, curve it, come out here. Now I want to put the pocket lining a little bit in the side seam here. And then I'm going to kind of curve it out. Now it doesn't really matter what shape you make for your pocket lining. It de may depend if you um, specifically want someone to be able to hold something in their pocket of a size. So um, if you are making these pants and you for sure want them to be able to say carry a wallet or a cell phone um, in their uh, pocket, um, you would have to of course make it big enough for that. Um, uh, I would say at least make it big enough for their hand or at least some small item uh, to fit in comfortably. And we're going to bring it up here and I'm going to attach it to the waist seam a little ways in. Again, the reason that we uh, have, leave a little bit attached to the waist and the side seam here is uh, uh, for sec um, securing the pocket, making it a little bit stronger. And then I'm going to follow the waist seam to the beginning. And there we go. Now it looks like I curved out this seam a little bit too much, so I might have to go back and fix that a little bit. But that's fine, we can go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I think I'm gonna try just not curving this piece and see what that does. Okay, no, that doesn't help us very much it changes that other part. So what I am going to do is I'm going to add another point, let's say about right here, and I'm going to not curve it and move it and sink it in to the side seam because we don't want it poking out of the side seam. I'm just snap that right in there. There we go. Nice and even. And that gives us a nice outline. Okay, so this is the bottom pocket. So I'm gonna label that and correct the grain right now so we don't get it confused with our second piece, which is gonna be their po top pocket lining. We want the grain to go straight up and down. And let's label this top. Top pocket lining, okay? Now we're pretty much gonna make another shape just like this, but it's gonna be slightly smaller to accommodate for the fact that this has this overlap. So what I'm gonna do, if you can see this, um, this is basically, how this is going to overlap this and our separate second piece is going to be the same shape it's just going to be this smaller shape because it attaches to this line instead of this line 
So what I'm going to do is I have already, actually let's move this out a little bit more so it's a little bit clearer. I'm going to uh, layer my front, uh, this sort of side pocket piece. And we can label that, actually we should do that. So front pocket. You can label it, uh, yeah, front, front pocket is fine. And I'm going to now layer this up with the notches. The best I can. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to protect both pieces. Okay. Now, oh, it looks like it was raised up. Can I scoot this down just a wee bit? There we go. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draft, and I'm going to draft the same curve shape down and around here. So I'll start with that first. Nope. Oop, I curved that even though it wasn't curved. Let's see if that alters the shape too much. And I'm going to come up. And now what I'm going to do is our original pocket comes across this line, but I'm going to stop it short and follow this line instead. Go all the way up here and then follow the waistline to where we began and finish drafting. Okay, now this gives us a piece. Now let me show you how they all sort of look with, uh, uh, for one another. I'm going to bring this out. Now this looks just like our top pocket lining, except it's a little shallower, shallower here because of course, let's remove the protection since we're done will align here like this. And when we, so it gets sewn on just like this, right here to that seam. We move it up a little bit, match a little bit better. And, come on, match up nicely. Okay, it doesn't wanna match up nicely, but I think you get the point. So th that's our sort of back pocket or back pocket lining. We attach this lining here to this piece. We attach this lining piece here, obviously to the inside. We sew it and then flip it around so it's on the inside. And then we layer all these guys together like this. And then we sew on the inside the lining pieces together to create the actual pocket. And then they all come together in the side seam and the waist seam. So this is what it will look like when it's all finished. Let me just remove the protection so you can kind of see it. The linings on the inside, this piece, and the actual pant piece right here. And you can check out your uh, jeans or your pants on the inside uh, to sort of look uh, to see how they created their pockets as well. There's different varieties of how you can create this lining. Sometimes the lining goes all the way to the center front. Sometimes it goes deeper. Um, sometimes it's shallower. Sometimes you get fake pockets, which don't have a lining. They're just sewn shut, um, which is always a sort of jip in my opinion. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's very common on ladies' pants that are very slim fit. Uh, the reason being for a couple, well, a couple reasons. One, it's cheaper to make non-functioning pockets. Um, and two, they assume that especially with very slim fit pants, that ladies aren't going to be putting a lot of stuff in their pockets because it'll start to bulk out the silhouette. Um, and if they're very slim fit, they're very tight fitting, so they're not very conducive to carrying things in the pocket anyway. Um, I personally like pockets, so we'll keep it that way, we'll keep it this way with an actual functioning pocket. Now let's finish off these pieces. I have my seam allowance and my notches, my label, but let's uh, give it some pattern info. Style's gonna be the same as, as uh, before, size eight, of course. And we're gonna cut to self. 
You can use contrasting fabric too if you want to highlight this little detail a little bit more, um, but typically it's made out of the cell fabric. And of course two because we've got one for each side. Now for our lining pieces, let's go ahead and do them. Let's correct our bottom uh, pocket lining grain. It should go straight up and down, just like the top pocket. Fortunately, we don't have a nice line to line this up with, so we're just gonna kinda do our best. There we go. And our pattern information for this, obviously, same old, same old, double number size is going to be the same. But we're going to cut to lining. Again, we have to specify that this is going to be out of a lining fabric and not the self or contrasting fabrics. And of course, we cut two because we need one for each side. And this guy is going to get a half inch seam allowance all the way around. miter those corners okay and the top pocket is going to get the same treatment let's move it out let's zoom out a little bit so I have room to spread out these pieces a little bit so we have top pocket and then let's put the pocket linings right beside it And let's add that seam allowance, half inch all the way around, mitered corners, and then there we are. Now let's use our text tool to add pretty much the same information as our other pocket lining. Okie dokie. And there we are, we have our finished pocket um, ready to be cut and sewn together. All right, so we're looking pretty good with these pants. Um, again, at this point, um, with all these, these pieces, I have my waistband, my yoke piece, uh, a back patch pocket, my fly, uh, uh, the pieces needed to construct my fly, um, a front pocket with the lining pieces, uh, and this is really a, a real finished pants pattern. Um, I don't really need any more. This is completely finished. However, let's take a look at some of the things that we can do to alter the um, sort of fit and size and shape and sort of silhouette of our pants bottom. I'm going to just go ahead and delete my grain lines, or I'm sorry, my guidelines right now just to have a little bit cleaner space to work from. Oh, so, oh, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to put pattern info on these guys. So let's do that. Also the main po uh, pants pieces, but maybe I'll do that a little bit later after we're done with their silhouette. Excuse the dog barking. So, um, like I said, your uh, yoke piece can be placed on fold, if you like, along the center back. Um, or you can keep the center back seam. It's really up to you. Um, it will just affect how you do the cutting information. Style number and size, of course, remain the same. And since I have left the uh, a seam allowance on the center back, I'm going to assume that we're going to cut to self and not leave it on fold. Again, that's gonna be up to you and um, dependent on sort of how you want to style your garment. If you are gonna leave your yoke, center back yoke seam on fold, this would just change to cut one self instead of cut two self. And let's rename that to yoke instead of that other word, other name. And let's put some pattern information on our back patch pocket. Um, style number size the same. 
And typically we have two patch pockets on the back. Um, so we're gonna cut uh, as many uh, uh, as we will need. If, sometimes there's only one, sometimes there's, and if you want more than one, it's, it's a little atypical, but of course you can cut and, and put as many patch pockets as you want. Traditionally, we have two, uh, on e uh, one on each side of our back, so I'm gonna cut to self, of course, if it is made out of our self fabric. Of course, with patch pockets, since we can really make them out of any different fabric if we want to, if we wanna make it out of a contrasting fabric for design purposes, of course we can. Okay, back to the business of our pants. Now, before we talked about if, again, we can sort of just slide um, these guys in and out, these corner pieces, these corner points in and out for, um, uh, you know, we can move them in to make the pants more tapered and we can move them out to make them uh, sort of more wide leg and flowing. Uh, but let's take a look at how we can sort of make like a boot cut or a flared cut and that will sort of change a little bit. So when we have, let's like a typical flared pant. Now, of course, if we want a, uh, a, a, a very flared pant with, you know, big full flares and a big dramatic change in silhouette, we can do the same thing as we did on the skirt. We can cut across, slash, spread, and keep a nice little flared piece that we seam in wherever we want that flare to start. And again, whenever we have flared pants, again, that have a very dramatic flare or uh, a lot of really full flares that go from being fitted into a very dramatically changing shape, that's the construction that we wanna use. But when we think about sort of maybe just a boot cut or something that is a little bit less flared, um, we're gonna use a similar technique. Um, uh, and again, a, a very similar technique to what we did in the slightly flared bell sleeve. Um, when we take a look at our pants, typically when we start to flare them out, we'll flare them out at about the knee. So um, our knee is about halfway between our, um, our crotch seam and our ankle, okay? So um, these are a little bit curved here. So what I wanna do is you can kind of sort of eyeball this with a guideline to put it about halfway between our crotch line and our ankle. Now you can test this with our measuring tool. So I'm just gonna measure straight down. And again, if we're looking for halfway from crotch seam to this guideline should be about the same from guideline to ankle. So that's about 11.7. Let's look at it down here. Okay, so I'm gonna move it down a little bit. But again, you can really start your flare wherever you want. If you wanna start it up here, you wanna start it down here, it really doesn't matter. We just typically see the flare start to move away from the silhouette at about the knee. Okay, 12.3, that's looking good. All right. Maybe a little wee bit down more just to get that middle. Now, if I really want to be precise, I could draft a line straight down in the middle and just place a point that's exactly in half. If you didn't want to do all this kind of wiggly testing. Okay, I guess that's about good. But what I really want is I want to make sure that the break that I create, so the break refers to where the silhouette starts to move away from the body. Um, is the same in the back. So I'm gonna put a guideline down here to line up the ankles. So when I cut here, I'm cutting in the same location, um, front and back. I'm gonna cut across here. Okie doke. And cut across here. Yep. 
Now I'm going to slash and spread these guys. I'm going to do about into thirds. And I'm going to do them straight down even though these lines are a little bit angled. Or about as straight as I can make it. If it's a little angled, it's okay. So we're doing roughly thirds. Now since, again, I'm not doing a separate piece, of course I can rotate these out really, really full and keep it as a separate piece to be seen here. But since we're going to incorporate this shape into one piece, I'm going to not flare it out so much, and I'm going to flare out and away from the middle piece that I cut. So just, let's say, a wee bit. It's five degrees. And I'll do the same on the other side, but it'll be a negative five because we're rotating in the other direction. And that'll give me an even opening. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and align these guys back up with the piece here. I'm going to just sort of generally place them and then exactly place them while I'm zoomed in. You can see this is starting to give us a little bit of a flared kind of bootleg cut. Now let's zoom in and place them a little bit more precisely. Now what we're going to do is we're opening up a little bit of, of, of fullness here, which is okay. Okay. Now what I want to do is pretty much the same thing for the other side. But before I get there, let's finish off this piece. Let's zoom out so I can see this whole piece. And what I'm going to do is protect all pieces and draft over the whole thing. I'm going to curve this point down here. They can, we can even sort of start to kick it out more if you want a little bit more flare. This is pretty subtle, which is fine. And we're going to curve these points down here as well. Curve this guy. Looks like, oh no, I thought it got pushed out a little bit there. Now this is our finished pattern with again a little bit of that boot cut. You see that subtle flare out. And of course we can make that a little bit more, a little bit less if we want to. And from here again, if you want to adjust it just by kind of grabbing your move point, um, you can. And what's nice is because we have points here at the knee, it's going to isolate whatever you do when you draw this out down there. So it's not going to come from here. It's going to keep it kind of like that. So let's keep it subtle. But if you want to play around or add a little bit more, you can do that. Just remember that we have to change the grain back to our center front. Align our center front. And there we go. Let's name it something more appropriate. And that will be our finished pant pattern for right here.
Let's add some pattern information and seam allowance. Now you notice that for all, I just want to just mention, you probably, this is understood, but um, I commonly for all my patterns are using style number one, two, three. That's um, sort of just a shortcut. Obviously, um, if I was making these patterns um, for real, I would never label all of my patterns with the same style number. That would defeat the whole purpose of having a style number. The whole purpose of style numbers is to keep all of your pattern pieces organized and let you know what pattern they're going to. So um, I, I really probably should be using different examples uh, or different style numbers for these examples. Um, um, however, I'm just, just, that's my shortcut, my go-to shortcut, but just so you know. And of course, we want to cut two out of our cell fabric. Alrighty, let's go ahead and add back our seam allowance. I want to do a little bit, um, wider or longer seam allowance here. We did it at about an inch for our hem and half an inch everywhere else. Miter our corners, and there we go. Now I can get rid of the original pant pattern and all these guys, because we don't want that mess. Time to do the same thing on the back. Oh, I already cut it. <laughs> so let's go here, let's move it out. And it's a little bit wider, but I'm still going to do it in about roughly thirds. Keeping the middle one centered and rotating the um, side ones out away from it. And we did the front at five degrees, so we'll do the back at five degrees. Oops, I did the middle one. You want to do the middle one? Negative five. All right, now let's place them just as we did before. So again, we're just doing the same thing. I'm going to zoom in and do it a little bit more carefully. It's hard to do zoomed out. Sometimes it wants to snap to places you don't want it to snap to. Sorry about that, guys. this guy right in here. Again, we're getting a little bit of ease right in here at the knee, but that's okay. Okay, now let's zoom out, protect, and redraft.
There we go. Let's fix the grain. Now we don't have much of a straight line to go by, but we have this little guy here so we can fix that. Rename it. Get rid of what we don't need. Now, um, the last thing that I'd really want to do, um, well, of course, let's, let's finish this guy off. Got to add a seam allowance and everything. Oops, I wanted that to be an inch. rest of it half an inch. Okay, the last thing that I really want to do other than add my pattern info is add one notch um, uh, to help me line up where the yoke is going to go. Oops. Now pretty much what I want to do is place a notch right where that dart originally was. And that's going to help me sew together the yoke properly. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to kind of line it up and zoom in. And we have this point here where that notch originally was. So I'm going to go ahead and add a notch there. And it's going to, come on, don't you want to do it? Okay, it's going to add a notch there and it's going to let me know that um, it is three or 4.33 inches from this point, which is my next point. So I'm going to add one here along this seam, this yoke seam on the pant. This, of course, now is the previous point. Oh, look how close I was. That was great. Right where in the same location. Okay, so that's going to help us be able to line up the yoke in the back pattern pieces. Okay, guys. So there we go. There's our finished pant piece, a uh, nice little boot cut. It's got pockets. Now, the only thing I didn't show you is um, a lot of times for jeans, they have a little change pocket that sits inside the little pocket right here. That's really just another patch pocket, so you can draft it the same way as you did the back. It's usually just a small little rectangle that sits. So you would just sort of protect these pieces, uh, make a little rectangle piece that would sit nicely in, in one of the pockets if you would like to. Of course, you'll need the same sort of marking to show where the top of that patch pocket sits, and that would go right on this uh, front pocket piece. Um, so uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make your own pants. Um, I'm not looking for you guys to copy this exactly. Um, again, if you wanna do different silhouettes, different designs, different patch pocket styles, different uh, front pocket styles, different yoke styles, uh, different sort of flares or legs, make it wide leg, uh, whatever you want, that's perfectly fine. I'm just looking for a nice finished pant pattern with uh, uh, the fly elements, with these elements, but again, you can interpret it any way that you want. Um, and that'll be due on Monday. So uh, that'll conclude today's lessons and um, our lessons on pants. Um, have a great weekend. Actually, I'm not going to save this.
Okay, bye, guys. Uh, bye-bye.